Keel Newsmaker Hotline. Joining us for a little bit is he's the host of Gun Talk. Has heard Sundays on Keel for uh, from one till four. Mr. Tom Gresham is here. Hey, Mr. Tom, welcome back to Keel. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. How's everything? We had a good Thanksgiving, and I just got back from Washington, D.C., and boy, I was glad to get back to Louisiana. That is <laughs> a little insight there. That is the purpose of our conversation. You went to the Supreme Court. You were in the gallery at the Supreme Court of the United States. A, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, the physical plant, I guess, uh, the description, what your thoughts were, and why were you there? What, what did you hear? Well, it is an amazing building, uh, as are a lot of the buildings in D.C., and very much worth the time and, uh, and money to go. I mean, D.C. is a great place to visit, and these bu buildings are absolutely beautiful, uh, so it's really worthwhile. Marble everywhere. It's impressive, and you know, and frankly, the Supreme Court is impressive. The justices are. They're obviously all of them very smart. I was there for this uh, the first time in 10 years that the Supreme Court has heard a case on the Second Amendment. It's a little bit of a squishy case. It may not be the best case, but at least we get finally get one up there. And the reason it's important, Robert, is that for 10 years, ever since the uh, very important Heller decision, in the Heller decision, the Supreme Court said the Second Amendment is an individual right to keep and bear arms. We all knew that to be true, but we needed the Supreme Court to say it. But for the last 10 years, lower courts have kind of ignored it and almost thumbed their noses at the Supreme Court. And so it was time for the Supreme Court to take a case and say, no, no, we really meant that. Furthermore, it's not just having a gun inside your home. You can actually have a gun outside your home, because that's what a lot of the courts are saying is that, oh, no, you can have a gun for self-defense in your home, but there's no right to have a gun outside your home. So that's what we were hoping to, to get out of this. So what was the case that you heard? And uh, well, let me clarify, or I'd like you to clarify, was this an actual case the court was hearing or was it a situation where they were listening to arguments on whether actually to take the case? Well, <laughs> weirdly enough, it was both. Um, it's the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus the city of New York. Very quickly, the city of New York had a law that said if you have a permit, a pistol permit in New York, very hard to get, by the way, it is illegal to take the gun out of the city, which is weird. Uh, I mean, they could, that they could tell you you can't go to another part of the state with your firearm, but that was the law. They said you can't go to a shooting range. You can't go to your uh, second home, for instance. You can't go to competition. Uh, for five years, we challenged that in the courts and finally appealed it all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court says, yeah, we'll take the case. They granted certiorari. And at that point, kind of like Lucy with the football, New York State says, oh, wait, we could actually lose, and there would be a really bad precedent here for us because this could actually reinforce gun rights. And they said, we'll just repeal the law and make it go away. So they repealed the law and then told the Supreme Court, see, nothing to see here. The case is now moot. And so about two-thirds of the arguments on Monday before the Supreme Court were all about whether the case is actually moot or should the court take the case. And only about a third of it was about the merits of the case. So basically, pardon so, me, anti-gun lawyers from the state of New York were literally arguing against themselves. Well, uh, Ju uh, Justice Alito had the best uh, line, I thought. He's asking the lawyer from New York, he said, because he asked him, he said, is New York less safe now than, you know, now that you have repealed this law? And the lawyer said, well, no, we've looked at that, and the police department's looked at it, and they think that uh, New York is not less safe now. And so Justice Alito said, well, then what possible rationalization could you have had for having that law in the first place? In other words, if it did not increase safety, then why were you stomping on the rights of your citizens? And he, you know, the lawyer kind of hemmed and hawed and all that. This is going to break down to the liberal justices versus the conservative justices. Of course, that's changed now that we have yeah. uh, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh on the, on the bench. And then Roberts, once again, will be the swing vote, and he's, he's squishy. I, you know, I honestly think there's a <laughs> decent possibility— they're going to end up saying the case is moot and not taking it. Okay, let me ask you, what what timetable are you looking at? What are you hoping for? They could probably decide the mootness within a two weeks. Now, whether or not they will tell us that, I don't know. Uh, because if they do, it may be that uh, Clarence Thomas would like to write a uh, another scathing dissent, which he has done before on this, because he's very strong on gun rights. 
Uh, worst case is it goes all the way to the end of this court session, which would be in June. We'll see. Now, there's another possibility inside baseball stuff. Uh, if they're trying to decide on mootness, Clarence Thomas could, just guessing now, could go to Justice Roberts, the, the chief justice, and say, look, I'll join you on the mootness on this if you agree that we will take these other cases which are headed our way on gun rights. So there's that kind of dealing goes on back there, too. Tom, how cool was it to be at the Supreme freaking court? It was way cool, as we say. Uh, I mean, first of all, there were protesters out there. The Bloomberg people had been bussed in. It was interesting. Uh, they're out there protesting. And then when people went up and asked them, uh, it was really interesting. You know, what's the case you're protesting? They had no idea. They didn't know what the case was. They didn't know the name of it. They didn't know what it was about. They had literally been bussed in with the Bloomberg money and told to rant and rave and hold up these signs and rail against the NRA. They had no idea what the Supreme Court was doing that day. It was all for the TV cameras.